What's going on everybody, it's your boy Justin Norm. I am in front of Traction Waveform 13. Now I was just notified that this particular new version came out. I have made two videos on this channel regarding Waveform Free. And I gotta say that, I mean, it's just amazing software. It's got a lot of cool features that are on here. So this is just me diving into it. I'm gonna show you exactly how to install Waveform 13 if you haven't installed it before. This is my first time doing it myself. So let's get right into it. So we have this clip launcher. Say hello to a new inspiring workflow, whether you're looking to break out of a creative rut, embark on a live performance, quickly stretch out ideas. So this new clip launcher is gonna allow you to import MIDI, audio, etc., into various different pads. Kind of looks like a keypad, kind of like my impact is where I can press the different buttons. Simply just drag MIDI step or audio clips into the grid or I choose to record directly into a slot while getting visually input feedback in the clip. Sequence actions can be used to be quickly build complex arrangements. Algorithmically, choose from the last of the actions, stack them and adjust them probability of each for a human-like variation of wild, unpredictable sequences. Sounds very interesting. Waveform 13 supports a range of popular launch pads. So we got that Akai. I need to buy a new controller myself, you all. So I might invest in it uh, sometime during the summer because my impact is great. Even though I have my keyboard over here, my impact, I told you once before, some of the buttons end up messing up, but that's a long story. We have the Wavetable Synth. Wavetable is a powerful synthesizer with flexible modulation and a huge sound. It features two Wavetable oscillators plus a sub and noise oscillator, 150 web. There are 150 Wavetables included and you can create your own. So that's pretty cool. All right, modulation for LFOs, all right. Refine UI, so I, I, I'm like, I don't remember what the UI looked like before. I'm like, I haven't used the software much, but I'm anxious to see what it looks like. So Waveform 13 refines its look and feel with a fresh palette of colors, a selection of new schemes to choose from, plus the option of creating and saving your own schemes. So that's gonna be great. All right, requested by you, Look at that. They're listening to the folks that request things. You spoke and we listen. Waveform Pro 13 includes some of your most requested features. Record without having any inputs armed for easier punching. Okay. D oh, that's going to be dope. Option to mute track contents whilst recording, AKA tape style. So once you're logged in to your account, if you don't have an account, definitely create that free account. So I'm gonna go up to my account and then I'm gonna go down to individual installers. And here is the download manager. I advise you to have that. Waveform 12 is still here. And Waveform Free 13 is right here. So let's go ahead and download that. 64 bit for Windows. All right, now that it's downloaded, let's go ahead and click on that. Screen might have went black for you, but it does say Waveform. 13 setup, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You're gonna press yes. You'll see the accept, next. Waveform change list. This gives you an indication of different things that have changed. Press next. And I'm gonna put C program files. Okay, at least 428 megabytes is needed. Create a shortcut. Next, install. While this is installed, and if you're getting value out of this, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. Click that notification bell, cause you know it's your boy, Justin Norm, and I'm gonna be doing videos like this. I cover cakewalk tutorials. I cover all type of tutorials dealing with vocal processing, et cetera, et cetera, but I am gonna start covering more waveform. I believe it's really a great software, and even if you are a cakewalk user like me, it doesn't hurt to have it, you know? So definitely try getting it. All right, let's launch waveform 13. All right, of course you got the waveform set up. I'm gonna say agree. All right, waveform is in demo mode. Click to start a 30 day free trial or unlock with a license. And one new license found waveform free. So it automatically found it. Press okay. Um, you can change the color. I've already talked about that once before. Make things look a little different. 
I'm gonna keep it on black for now. And then of course, all of your projects that you may have had in the previous one is still here. So I still see my new one added, my test two edit or whatever else I had in here. All right, now that we're here, let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm gonna cl click new project. I'm just gonna call this um, waveform 13 April. I didn't capitalize it, but it's okay. And I'm gonna save it as a default. Now there are some options in here that you can use, uh, but I noticed that something like this, if you use a singer songwriter, it comes with tracks already embedded in it. Now you could delete them. It's good to have to set up if you're a guitar player and that's what you wanna go for. I'm just gonna use default and then open default edit. Sometimes if you don't have this checked, it'll just create the project, but it'll never open. Remove clips when loading templates. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but I will have it open, create project, and there we go. So this is what it looks like now. Now, one thing that was very fascinating about this software is that when you want to like drop a track or if you wanna create a track, normally you just drag and drop it over. That is one of the new features that I see that's on Cakewalk Sonar. You're gonna be able to just drop effects or just drag and drop them. All right, so you may have eight tracks there, but I'm just gonna click my own track. You can press T or just click on the plus sign to create one. And when you do that, you notice it's gonna be set on master L. I don't really want it on L, so I'm gonna right click and set it to input one. But what I really want this to be is an instrument track. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna drag, it says drag this onto a track to create a new clip or a marker, right? But I can also drag this, if you right click on the gray plus sign, then you're gonna see a list of instruments that are up here and effects, etc. I wanna put this ample sound guitar on there. So I'm just gonna drag it, but it's different. You don't drag it to where it says track one, you don't drag it or in the grid, you drag it right to the track itself. And you'll notice that once it loads up, it pulls up and now I can play this Ooh, we can save a thumbnail image of plug-in UI. Oh, that's different. I like that. You can take a picture of it. This is helpful when I'm creating my little video um, screenshots and stuff because I normally do screenshots when I'm creating my thumbnails for my videos. So let's see. We have a keyboard, right? So we can play it. Okay, you gotta make, I forgot, you gotta make sure you have it enabled record. So press enable record. All right, and then, so on here, let's press record. Okay, all right, let's hear that. All right, let's hear that. All right, and then it's there. I can right click on it. I can merge, I can send it to a group, identify the key of it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it says the key of this clip is most likely C major, 67% A minor, 56 or G major, 40% or C minor, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, of course, being all the keys that I played were C. So yeah, it's gonna be course C major. All right, I can right click on it, then I can do rip delete, clip velocity, looping. Oh, let's see what looping looks like. And then I gotta just drag it out and drop it. I mean, drag it, and then you can make it longer. That's cool, okay. Did it loop it correctly though? That's the question. Let's go back. X out of this. Okay, even though, oh wow. I don't even have to have the keyboard up. It's still still up and showing. All right, so when you unenable the record, okay, then I can do what I need to do, but it's still making sound. So I just gotta figure out how to get to the point where, you know, some of these like if you don't want to use a keyboard, how to turn the keyboard off so it's not 
actually doing anything anymore. Still learning this software, you all. It's a tutorial, but it's really a tutorial for me. So you get to learn as I learn it, basically. But if you want to go to a professional that knows much about this, then definitely do that. Do this. Watch now. If I quantize this, watch it's gonna be off. Maybe I change the percentage amount. I don't know. All right, y'all. I did what I came to do with this. It is a little tedious for me to get into it, but I do love the way the software is made. Um, this might've been a dull, boring video for you, but I apologize. If, if you happen to stay during this whole entire time, then good for you. If you liked it, definitely give it a thumbs up. It does help it spread to more people. I'm gonna dive more into this software slowly, but surely. I do love all the capabilities that it has. And I know there's going to be easier ways to do things. I just got to learn what they are. And then I might have to go and customize it myself. So the way to make it more similar to Cakewalk um, as far as the buttons and stuff like that. So with that being said, it's your boy, Justin Norm. It's been a pleasure to explore the software. But if you're a person that says, hey, man, I need more help with Cakewalk, then this tutorial will definitely help you whatever youtube recommends all right i love you all peace